this is your first appearance. You have two counts before the court. Count one is disorderly conduct in which the state alleges that on or about June 27, 2023, in Greenwood County, Kansas, you did unlawfully and intentionally use fighting words or engage in noisy conduct, tending reasonably to arouse either alarm or anger or resentment in others, to wit a Mary Owens. This is, as charged, a Class C misdemeanor. The sentence could be up to 30 days in the county jail and a $500 fine. In count two, you're accused of assault. That date, and in Greenwood County, you did unlawfully and knowingly place another person, to wit Mary Owens, in reasonable apprehension of immediate bodily harm, to wit balling up your fist and hitting items. This also is a Class C misdemeanor. If convicted, you could serve another 30 days in the county jail, and you could pay another fine up to $1,000. These, sir, are the charges against you. Have you any questions at this time? No, ma'am. All right. Uh, are you going to be hiring an attorney, applying for court appointed, or representing yourself? And I will tell you that the county attorney offers a diversion program, but you do have to be eligible, apply, and qualify for that. Uh, they look at the charges against uh, you your record. Do you have much of a recent record to speak of? No, ma'am. Ms. Gillette, do you it, know just from what's preliminarily available if he's eligible? Uh, not sure, Judge. I have to look. All right, Mr. Owens, is that something you want to look into? The diversion, uh, you would do certain things they want you to do, pay a fine cost, maybe diversion fee, maybe take some kind of anger evaluation or something. Uh, but if you yes, did what you said, they might dismiss, they would dismiss the charges, but you have to qualify. Do you want to look into it? Yes. All right. So while you're in custody there, make sure that you get an application for diversion. And Missy, when do you want him to appear? How about August 1st at 3.30? August 1st at 3.30. You'll need to be back here at that time unless you've been accepted onto the diversion program but you have to apply. And then if you have to see if you're approved and if you're approved, they will send you a contract to sign and return. And there's a fee that goes with the application and the fee that goes with the contract. So get that started right now, if that's what you wanna do. Don't wait until that August 1st date. Okay. Judge, these are just misdemeanors. So I recommend 2,500 cash charity. Mr. Owens, where do you live? What town? In Jamaica. I have the money, but my, my payee is my mother. All right, is she the alleged victim? Yes. Okay. So you're on disability? Yes. And do you live with your mother? Uh, excuse me? Do you live with your mother? Yes, ma'am. Well, normally we have no contact orders with the, the alleged victim. Ms. Gillette, are you seeking that in this case? Judge, I think he probably needs some kind of counseling before he has contact with his mother. Um, Ma'am, I just got off. I'm I'm in counseling. Okay. I see crossfriends regularly. If you don't go home to your mother's, where will you be? Where will you right be across staying? the street from here, really. That's At your mother's house? The friend's house. The friend. Okay, yeah. so you do have a friend to stay with? 
Yes. Okay. Is there any chance that I could OR, Your Honor? I am going to give you a $2,500 OR bond with the condition that you have no contact with your mother, uh, except if you need to get funds out of your account to apply for this diversion, I want you to take an officer with you if, he, if you can get one to go with you to keep the peace. Okay. I don't want you being around your mother alone and I want the officer there to make sure you don't misbehave. Okay. Or get accused of misbehaving because I assume that's what you're gonna to have to do is go to her as your payee and, and ask for the money you need to apply for this diversion. Yes, ma'am. And you said you're in counseling. Uh, when you get out, I want you to immediately contact your therapist and see if you can get in for a therapy session. Okay, she's here now. <laughs> she's at the jail? Yeah. All right. Well, you, you do what she says to do on that issue of mental health. Yes, ma'am. All right. Anything else we need to take up? Not that I take up. <laughs> okay, Ms. Gillette, anything further? Judge, I don't think so. All right. And sir, I'm going to appoint an attorney for you, Shannon okay. Cooper. They'll have her card, your cards there. So contact Ms. Cooper, get the diversion application filled out, but before you turn it in, you, you talk to Ms. Cooper about it. Okay. okay. I hope that the appointing the attorney makes this easier, but doesn't complicate it. So, all right. All right. At the county jail, your name is Nicholas Tanner. We are here today on three cases for Mr. Tanner on the record in 23 CR 1. 23 CR 48, 23 CR 142. Mr. Tanner appears in person, in custody, and pro se. The state appears by and through Greenwood County Attorney Jill Gillette. Mr. Tanner, on 23 CR 1, you failed to appear. Did you fail to appear for your pretrial conference? Uh, Judge, this is bond revocation, I believe. So he was arrested not for failing to appear, but for violating bond? Or you're saying the charge is violation of a protection order? He's so. He has a new case oh, that is well, let's, 20, I, are, Okay, but on this case, Ms. Gillette, he has a jury trial set, it looks like already, for August 22nd and a pretrial on August 17th, correct? Yes. So um, Mr. Tanner's on an ankle monitor, and that's something that you put on him because this is a felony domestic battery, third or subsequent, along with disorderly conduct. Mm -hmm. And he went back over at the victim's house and picked up the second case, case number mm -hmm. uh, 23 CR 48, because he was going back over to where his victim was. In the meantime, he's had multiple reports, and I even forgot one in the motion of failures to comply with his GPS monitor. Um, and so we just got another report of dead batteries on the GPS that was a significant list of things he has not been doing. So we put them all in a motion. And so he is currently um, not complying with his GPS. So we issued, asked for a warrant, filed a motion, and the judge approved a warrant for failure to comply with his bond conditions, not keeping his GPS on. Um, he's disappearing for hours up to days at a time. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's start with the first appearance then on the newest of the three cases. 
2023 CR 142. Mr. Tanner, you're accused of giving a worthless check. That is a charge that alleges that on or about the 13th day of May in 2023 in Greenwood County, Kansas, you issued a worthless check by making, drawing, issuing, or delivering a check, order and draft on a bank, credit union, savings and loan association, or depository for the payment of money or its equivalent with the intent to defraud and knowing at the time of the making, drawing, issuing, or delivering of such writing that the maker or drawer had no deposits or credits with the drawee for the payment of such check, order, or draft in full upon its presentation, specifically delivering check number 1061 drawn on the home bank and trust account to G&W Foods in the amount of 308.75. As charged, this would be a class A, non-person misdemeanor. And that means that if you were convicted, the maximum possible penalties could be up to a year in the county jail and a fine up to $2,500. Do you have any questions, Mr. Tanner, about the charge or the possible penalty? Um, I don't have any questions, Your Honor. I have the money to pay that. Um, honestly, just forgot about it. I just finished paying off my okay. bank account for the negative fees for that. All right. Well, you who's your attorney in the other two cases? Uh, Ambrose. I don't know if he will take this misdemeanor or not. Do you want an attorney to represent you in this count, sir? Um, I assume yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, All right, I'm going, your circumstances financially have not changed since Ambrose was appointed? No, ma'am. Okay, so I'm going to appoint attorney Shannon Cooper. And talk to her about the best way to take care of this case. What to do about the money you, you have. Don't get rid of it. Don't lose it. So Shannon Cooper, and when are we going to set this, Missy? Let's set this August 8th at 3.30. This will be set August 8th at 3.30. Please contact Miss Cooper. The jail will have her number on their card. Make sure you contact her before August 8th at 3.30. You do need to be back here before me by Zoom, August 8th at 3.30. Now then, you are set in pre-trial and jury trial on the other cases. You've indicated your attorney is Christopher Ambrose and I have confirmed that. It looks like your reasoning for being here today is not because you failed to appear, but because the state is alleging that you have been violating the conditions of your bond, which require you to stay away from the alleged victim. The allegations are that you continue to have a dead battery on your GPS monitor and that it is required, Mr. Tanner, that you keep that battery charged at all times. Now, I'm curious, I see that I signed off on that warrant, but Typically, those go to the judge handling the case, and I would not be the judge in the felony case. That looks like, uh, Missy, who is that? Judge Crum? Um, I think so. Let me pull it back up. Yes, Judge Crum has the felony case. Okay. All right, so Mr. Tanner, why can't you keep that battery charged? Um, my charger, so I did get in trouble back in May, nice. um, and I did do a way better job. My char I contacted Green Feather. My charger wasn't working. Mm -hmm. um, I contacted them when it was blinking red, and then it did die. And after a day or two, 
I um, actually took my knife and cut out the bad spot in the charger and spliced it together because they said I could buy it for $30 and fixed it. And that's why I came back online. I have a, I needed a good charger and I didn't hear back from Green Feather. And that's why I was able to get my ankle monitor to even charge in the first place. Well, that monitor is on to satisfy the court's concerns. You didn't have any authority to contact Green Feather and, and cut, thought, your, cut your bracelet off. No, 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 ma'am. I didn't cut my bracelet off. The charger that charges it that charges it wasn't working. It had a bad spot in the charger. Well, do you do you understand that the monitor is what allows you to be free and out of jail? Yes, ma'am. That's why I wanted to fix my charger. What is the state's recommendation on this issue of bond, Ms. Gillette? Well, Judge, I forgot to list the February violation where he didn't keep it on and charged in February. But this is not a one-time thing. This is multiple times. Um, and so he had nine dead batteries in May over the course from May 1st to May 18th. Um, some of those for over a day. Um, and then he had a second report for June 23rd and 24th. Um, and so he was off for more than 24 hours then. Then we received another report from June 29th from 7 a.m. till 2.34 p.m. And then there was also one back when he first got it. So this isn't a one-time thing. This isn't a one-time charger issue. This is a failure of the defendant to keep his bracelet on. Um, these are serious allegations. It's felony domestic battery. Um, so I would like him to have to be before Judge Crum. Um, Judge Crum had admonished him. Mr. Ambrose had admonished him. I had brought it up on numerous court hearings and Judge Crum had told him no further issues with the ankle monitor will be tolerated at his hearing May 25th mm -hmm. since they had more issues. So uh, Frank, okay. I will Go ahead. Just custody till he sees Judge Crum and his next hearing date is August 17th. I would like to have him see Judge Crum on the uh, bond revocation before that date, if that's possible. Uh, as I said, when I approved that bond, I didn't realize the case had already gone on to Judge Crum, or I would have asked Judge Crum to address whether the warrant should issue or not. So I do want Judge Crum to look at the matter. And so Missy, I'm going to need to see, I'm going to need a date for him to get in front of Judge Crum as soon as possible for a uh, bond revocation hearing that his attorney can attend with him. Is there any way we can do that much, much sooner, like maybe in the next, I don't know, 24, 48 hours, something like that? I'll have to message his AA because I don't have control of their calendar all right but i can i can do that and cc his attorney in it that that would be good uh, that i signed that not really realizing the case had gone on to judge crum and i'd like for judge crum to look at that as soon as possible we have court next week with judge crum as well so on this case not specifically on this case but judge crum's days for greenwood and elk are next week okay so. Well, for right now, Mr. Tanner, I'm going to, I've given you the dates, but in the meantime, my assistant, Missy, is going to try to get you a bond hearing in front of Judge Crum so he can hear the allegations, your attorney can respond to them and uh, see whether or not Judge Crum thinks you should stay incarcerated or if the bond should be reinstated with new conditions or whatever the situation might be. And they'll let you know the new date. And so you can't make bond right now, but because of the allegations, but as soon as we can get you in front of the judge, we'll do that. Yes, Your Honor. All right. 
Thank you, Mr. Tanner. You're excused from these hearings at this time. We are on the record in case number 2023, CR134, State of Kansas versus William Ellis Connor. The state appears by and through Jill Gillette, County Attorney. Mr. Connor appears in person, in custody and pro se. Mr. Connor, in count one, the state is accusing you with the unlawful felonious possession of methamphetamine. This is a level five drug felony, which means that if you were to be convicted and depending upon your criminal history, you could serve anywhere from 10 to 42 months in the Kansas Department of Corrections, and you could pay a fine up to $100,000. In count two, the state is alleging that on the same day as your possession of marijuana, June 28, 2023, in Greenwood County, Kansas, you also possessed a halluc an hallucinogenic drug, marijuana. And that is a class B non-person misdemeanor for a first offense. That means if convicted, you could serve six months in the county jail where you are now, and you could pay a fine up to $1,000. And in count three, the state is alleging that you possessed smoking pipes, scales, and straw pieces with the intent to use them to store, contain, conceal, inject, ingest, inhale, or otherwise introduce controlled substances into the human body. This charge is called unlawful possession of drug paraphernalia, also a class B non-person misdemeanor. And if convicted, you could serve up to six months in the county jail for this charge and pay another fine of up to $1,000. Mr. Connor, do you have any questions about your charges or their penalties? No, ma'am. Do you intend to hire an attorney or apply for court appointed? Um, I will apply for court appointed. I'll need to ask you some questions to make sure you qualify, starting with, are you employed at this time? No, I've been actively looking for employment. And how long have you been unemployed? Since um, January. Do you have any income at all? I've been trying to get unemployment but it's kind of hard to deal with that system i've been filing every week but i uh, i had a phone interview a couple weeks ago and it has to depend on what they they have to do their investigation and ap approve me or not all right and are you married or single uh, engaged okay. uh, does that mean you go habitate together or not you live together? Uh, yes. And is the person you're engaged to employed? No, she's uh, filing for disability. Okay. I will appoint an attorney to represent you. August 4th at 1.30. You'll need to, thank you. You'll need to be back here, sir, August 4th at 1.30 by Zoom with your attorney. And we need to address your bond. Ms. Gillette, recommendations for bond. Judge, we'll also be dealing with a traffic case he picked up the day before these charges. So, um, he now has two cases in All front. Right. Well, let's let's conclude this one, and then I'll I'll pick that one up. When when or what do you recommend on his bond? Um, judge, my recommendation is five thousand cash surety. Mr. Connor, do you live in the county here? Yes, ma'am. All right, I will set the bond at five thousand dollars cash or professional surety required. Time. You may go, sir. 
Thank you. You're welcome. We are on the record in 2023, CR 132, the state of Kansas appears by Jill Gillette, Greenwood County Attorney. The defendant, Mr. Ray, appears in person, in custody, and pro se, Mr. Ray, you are charged with, looks like five counts, and this is your legal first appearance on those counts. In count one, you are accused of sexual exploitation of a child. The state is alleging in this count that on or about June 28, 2023 in Greenwood County, Kansas, you did then and there, contrary to the statutes of the state of Kansas, unlawfully and knowingly possess visual depictions of a child under the age of 18 years or did engage in sexually explicit con conduct with intent to arouse or satisfy the, the sexual desires or appeal to the purient interests of yourself. And they cite a file number ending in 2E22. This is charged as a level five person felony. That means that if you were to be convicted, your sentence, depending on your criminal history, if any, could be from 31 months up to 136 months in the Kansas Department of Corrections, commonly known as prison. And you could be faced with a fine of up to $300,000. In count two, you are accused of sexual exploitation of a child. The state is alleging that on that same date, June 28, 2023 in Greenwood County, you did again unlawfully and knowingly possess visual depiction of a child under the age of 18 years of age, shown or heard engaging in sexually explicit conduct with the intent to arouse or satisfy the sexual desires or appeal to the purient interests of yourself with a file ending in F3CC and the victim under 14 years of age, approximately two or less years old. This is charged as a level five person felony. Again, the sentence could be an additional 31 to 136 months and another $300,000 fine. In count three, you're accused of sexual exploitation on that same date in Greenwood County. Again, unlawfully and knowingly possessing visual depictions of a child under the age of 18 years of age, shown or heard engaging in sexually explicit conduct with the intent to arouse or satisfy the sexual desires or appeal to the period interests of yourself with a victim under 14 years of age, approximately two or less years of age to be specific. And the file ending in F80CD, another level five person felony, meaning you could serve another 31 to 136 months in prison and pay another fine up to $300,000. In count four, you're accused of sexual exploitation of a child on or about that same date in Greenwood County. Unlawfully and knowingly possess visual depictions of a child under the age of 18 years of age, shown or heard engaging in sexually explicit conduct with an intent to arouse or satisfy the sexual desires or appeal to the period interests of yourself with a victim between the age of 14 and 17 years. This file ending in B56333. Another level five person felony, meaning you could serve another 
31 to 136 months in prison and pay another fine up to $300,000. In count number five, you're accused of aggravated internet trading in child pornography. This charge alleges that on or about June 28, 2023 in Greenwood County, Kansas, you did then and there, contrary to the statutes of the state of Kansas, unlawfully and knowingly cause or permit by visual performance to be viewed by use of an electronic device connected to the internet by a person other than yourself or a person depicted in the performance to it trading child pornography. This is charged as an off-grid felony. That means that you could serve a sentence with the Kansas Department of Corrections without the eligibility of probation or parole. In other words, a life sentence. Do you have any questions, sir, about the charges that have been filed against you or the penalties? No. And do you intend to hire an attorney, apply for court appointed, or represent yourself? Um, can I apply for a court appointed attorney? Certainly. I need to ask you some questions to see if you qualify. Are you employed at this time, sir? Um, I'm sure that I've been fired. Okay. Where did you work? Um, Simmons Pet Food. And how long had you been with Simmons? Um, about two years. Now, you say you're sure you've been fired. Has someone told you that? Or is there some reason to believe they won't take you back? Um, I, I'm pretty sure I don't have the points um, available to continue to work there because we work on a point system and you get a point for not being there. And I think you uh, have a bunch more for no call, no shows. So you didn't call your employer to let them know you were unavailable while you were in custody? Um, the police officer said he was going to call and tell them. All right. Are you married or single? Uh, single. Do you have any money in savings? Um, I have very little. And what would very little mean? Um, maybe 500. Do you own a home or pay rent? Or um, not? I was renting, but, um, I had to get my stuff out. What does that mean? You had to get yourself out. Um, the landlord, uh, evicted me. Because and my of these charges or before these charges. Um, uh, after these charges. Okay. All right. I will appoint an attorney to represent you, Mr. Ray. I can't tell you who it will be. My assistant, Missy, will do some checking to make sure she gets uh, an attorney that is suited to represent your case and that you can work with. And uh, she'll let you know by the end of this week who that is and how to get a hold of the attorney. Okay. So we will set your hearing for a preliminary hearing. We'll set it for status until you and your attorney have talked and decide if you want an evidentiary hearing or not. Missy, when will that be? August 4th at 1.30. So you and your attorney will be back here by Zoom before me August 4th at 1.30. And that leaves us on the issue of Bond, Ms. Gillette, what is the state's position on bond? Uh, Judge, we'd ask for a substantial bond. Um, we actually have already filed an amended complaint and you read the counts in the original complaint, but mm -hmm. count one was amended to age eight to 14 years of age and count four was amended to eight to 14 years of age. Um, we literally just picked four of the child porn video images when there are hundreds 
on the electronic devices belonging to this individual. So we would ask for a bond of about 150,000. I do recall reading the uh, affidavit that gave rise to the search warrant. So I am familiar with the concerns of the state. His bond is currently 124,000. It's at 124 now and you're asking it be 150,000? 624,000. Oh. Okay, 624 now, and you're asking that it be 150,000. Is that right, Ms. Gillette? That's correct, Judge. All right. So as I understand it, Mr. Ray, you don't know where you're going to go if you're bonded or not? Um, I'm pretty sure I could stay at my father's. Where does he live? Um, in uh, the country in Hamilton, Kansas. All right. Does he have any criminal record? No. Is he employed, retired? Retired. What did he retire from? Um, he was a fire sprinkler um, outfitter. Okay. All right. I will modify your bond reducing it from six hundred and forty thousand dollars to one hundred and fifty thousand but deputy all of those conditions i placed on the warrant will remain if you see those basically uh, the bond must be cash or professional surety sir i want you to make sure you understand all these conditions you are to have while well, you're on bond, no contact of any kind with persons 17 years of age or younger, no contact with the internet. I'm going to even restrict you from cell phones if they have internet or any other device capable of depicting children in sexual or other uh, sexual conduct, content or other depictions or adult sexual acts, uh, no pornography basically, no adult pornography, no child pornography, no materials depicting nudity. And I'm not just limiting it to children. I want you to change, if this is your frame of mind, I want it changed. Don't have any contact with anyone involved in the exploitation of children or contact with adults who resemble children in physical stature, no contact with devices that depict child voices, don't go about places where children could be found, stay away from parks, swimming pools, that sort of place. No contact with any of the alleged victims, whether identified or not. No contact with any co-defendants. And I want electronic monitoring and bond supervision by court services. That means you'll need to report to them probably weekly and follow any uh, directions they give you. But I'm, I'm really putting a lot of conditions on here, Mr. Ray, but you've got some very heavy duty charges against you that suggest you could be a real threat to the community, especially the vulnerable children. And the fact that you don't have a job or a residence suggests that in light of those factors, plus the charges against you, you could be a flight risk too. So deputy, do you have the list on the warrant of the bond conditions? Yes, ma'am. All righty. Any questions about that, Mr. Ray? No. 
All right. Anything further, Ms. Gillette? Not from the state, Judge, thank you. You're welcome. All right, you may go at this time, Mr. Ray. And Your Honor, just to confirm, the next hearing is August 4th of 23 at 1.30? That is correct. Hello, sir, what is your name, please? They're at the jail. Wayne Everly. Wayne Everly. All right, Mr. Everly will be on the record in your case, number 2023, CR156, State of Kansas versus Wayne E. Everly. County Attorney Jill Gillette for the state, Mr. Everly in person, in custody and pro se. Sir, you are here for first appearance on a number of charges, and I'll go over those with you, as well as the possible penalties and rights relating thereto. In count one, sir, you are charged with aggravated battery. It is alleged in this count that on or about July 9th, 2023 in Greenwood County, Kansas, you did uh, then and there, contrary to the statutes of the state of Kansas, recklessly cause bodily harm to another person, to wit a Corey Harris with a deadly weapon, to wit a lawnmower, in a matter whereby great bodily harm, disfigurement or death could be inflicted. As charged, sir, this is a level eight person felony, which means depending on your criminal history, if any, you were to be convicted with this charge. Your penalties could be anywhere from seven months to 23 months in the Kansas Department of Corrections, commonly called prison. And you could be ordered to pay a fine up to $100,000. In count two, you are charged with another count of aggravated battery that on or about July 9th, 2023 in Greenwood County, Kansas. You did then and there, contrary to the statutes of the state of Kansas, recklessly cause bodily harm to another person, to wit Joni Harris, with a deadly weapon, to wit a lawnmower, in a matter whereby great bodily harm, disfigurement, or death could be inflicted. This charge means that if convicted, you could serve another seven months to 23 months in prison, and pay another fine up to $100,000. In count three, you're accused of that on that same day of July 9th, unlawfully and knowingly place another person to wit Kayton Harris in reasonable apprehension of immediate bodily harm with a deadly weapon to wit a lawnmower. This is charged as a level seven person felony, which means in addition to the first two counts, if convicted, you could serve another 11 months to 34 months, and you could pay a fine up to $100,000. In count four, you're accused of another count of aggravated assault, placing Abigail Recker in reasonable apprehension or immediate an reasonable apprehension of immediate bodily harm with a deadly weapon to win a lawnmower. This is also a level seven person felony with 11 to 34 months possible sentence and another fine of up to $100,000. In count five, you're accused of criminal damage to property at that, on that same date by means other than fire explosion it is alleged that you damaged, destroyed, defaced, or substantially impaired the use of property to wit a mailbox and mount in which another has an entrance to wit Corey and or Joni Harris without the consent of such person. And the damage done was less than $100,000, making this a class B non-person misdemeanor if convicted, you wouldn't go to prison on this one. You would remain in the county jail there where you are now for up to six months and pay a fine up to $1,000. Sir, do you have any questions of me as far as 
what you're accused and the possible penalties have gone over? No. All right, do you intend to hire an attorney or apply for court appointed? I don't know, I haven't, I haven't talked to anybody yet. All right, well, are you able to afford to hire an attorney? Not, I've got one coming. Well, do you want me to ask you questions to see if you qualify for court appointed attorney? Yeah, go ahead. All right, are you employed at this time, Mr. Everly? Self-employed. Self-employed, what kind of work do you do? HVAC install. All right, and do you have a company or is this just something you do? Uh, Everly as Appliance you? Service. Everly Appliance Services, and where's that located? Fall River. Okay. And is that where you live as well as Fall River? Yes. Okay. And how much do you make on average per month? Anywhere from 3,000 to 10,000. 3,000 to 10,000 per month? No, I don't make it a month. Oh, okay. So on probably, average? Probably, probably average about two, two, one to $2,000 a month. Okay. Right now. And do you pay rent or a mortgage? Yep. What do you pay for that? Seven hundred and fifty dollars um, a month on the house house payment. Okay. Then, and do you have any other income besides what you told me about? No. Are you married or single? Married. Does the wife work? Yes. And where does she work? Cobalt boats. What does she make per month? I don't know for sure. Your best estimate per month? Thousand dollars. But you're you're welcome to appear by Zoom or come to the courthouse August 4th at 1:30. Your attorney will be here by Zoom. Make sure again that you contact that attorney before that date and talk about your case. And then we need to talk about bond. How long have you been in the Fall River area? 40 some years. And how long have you had the uh, Everly Appliance? Same amount of time. Okay. Now, do I recall that the alleged, that the, one of your neighbors at least is one of the alleged victims? He's the one that you uh, got off, let or sentenced to for stealing the $3,000 out of my house that he's never paid back. All right, so the one of the alleged victims so, broke into your house and was convicted for that? Yes, your, your prosecuting attorney is the one that got him off or, or took him, uh, got his sentence reduced. Got his sentence reduced, okay. So, so, whatever it was. so he is hasn't that never paid anything anyway. All he's, right. That's three years ago. Okay. No restitution. Whatever you said he was supposed to do on that date that he was sentenced, he nothing nothing was ever done of that what you said he was supposed to do. Was he let off probation already? He never had probation because of the COVID. All right. Well, that's something that a person can look into and you can talk to your attorney about because that's not the way normally things are done but i don't uh, know the unique situation after it left here i don't know so that's a different issue though whatever happened right. in that there are ways to follow up on that and not what's alleged here well how far away does he live from you he lives across the street from my property now So if I bond you out, are you guys going to have more trouble? No, I've got other, other things I've got to do. Is he going to be taunting you or bothering you? Your Honor, I happen I to know not. 
Mr. Everly has chased this child down in a vehicle, ran him off the road, made him and his friends pull over to cuss them out, chase them from Fall River to Fredonia, Kansas. He's no, taken into his own hands multiple times to the point the parents filed I considered filing for a PFA against Mr. Everly. He's trying to do back road justice against a child. And the kid has now turned 18 and he has bought his own house. He's they are all because Mr. Everly is his great uncle. And they end up running into each other at family gatherings until Mr. Everly throws such a tantrum that he is asked to leave family gatherings because they can't be in the same place at the same time without him screaming and yelling. Mr. Everly needs to not be seeking backyard justice and he needs to have no contact with this victim nor his family members. Okay, you keep talking about this child, but you told me he's 18. He was a juvenile at the time of the crime and now he's an adult and so but he's 21 years old 20 or 21 years old and mr everly is a gentleman of more experienced age and should know better than to try to ram into people trying to put up a mailbox with a lawnmower he's taking into his own hands justice and he needs to stop okay so so Somebody under 18, what, broke into his house and stole, what do you say, $3,000 that they never had to pay back? And he now claimed $3,000. There was restitution ordered. There was probation ordered. He ran the kid down with his friends and told them he no, couldn't I did have not. Hang on. Kinds of problems with Mr. Everly ever since that case occurred. And Mr. Everly tries to take things into his own hands every time he sees me on the street. He comes up and starts questioning me. Okay. He's been, he's been a pain ever since that case happened. The child has been released because he was a juvenile at the time. But you said he, his, you said he's twenty or twenty one now. Uh huh. So that's an old case that never did get resolution. Old, old old case. The kid completed probation, but you can't hold someone on probation for restitution. We all know what the case law says on that. So, so the kid never, the kid who's now 21 never paid any restitution for the items he stole? I'm not going to say pay any restitution. I haven't looked it up in a long time, Judge, but okay. there was restitution ordered and there were costs ordered and he had probation and he had fees he had to pay on probation. Okay. All right. And Mr. Everly, you're saying that you think that's at the root of what these charges are. It has something to do with that, that uh, young man never paying you back. What I want to know, and you don't, I don't need you to answer anything incriminating, but what I need to know is if you guys live across the street, does he live with his parents or does he own his own property? Do you know, Miss Gillette? Because I thought I heard it both ways. His parents, I thought, lived on the other side of a block, and I think he's moving into his own house or something near them. They all live in Fall River in the same area and have for years, years upon years upon years. All right, so Mr. Everly, do you want to bond out? Yeah, I've got things I need to do. Okay, well, do you understand that if I give you a bond, I can't have you around those folks, the, the young man, his parents, you understand I can't have you around them. Yep. And I'm That'll concerned be because because if what you're saying is true, you got every right to be mad if if he went into your house and stole stuff and didn't pay you back. But on the other hand, you can't. It's only well, going to try to put his mailbox where my driveway is supposed to be on this piece of property. That's the that's the other problem. And nobody ever confronted me about the situation. Well, you probably ought to be talking to a lawyer about those kind of things. You just can't take them into your own hands. As frustrated as you may be, you're only going to make it worse if you keep trying to take it into your own hands. I mean, you've seen that. You've been sitting in the county jail. You know what I mean, right? Yep, I know what to mean.
Could you recommend an amount, Ms. Gillette? I have not, Judge. I would recommend 5,000 cash surety, no contact with any of these victims. <clears throat> Can you do that, Mr. Everly? Can you have no contact? If, if they show up at the mailbox, you don't even look, you walk away. If you see them driving down the road, you look away. Yeah. You sure you can control as yourself? As long as they can stay away from me. Well, what if they can't? You're, you're the one on bond, not them. What if they don't? Well, I guess I'll have to go the other direction. Okay. They don't torque. They don't taunt or torment you or anything, do they? Oh, yes, he does. Well, he, drives around, he drives around around my house quite often when he does need to go by, by my house. He, 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 all he has to do is go north right out of town, but he has the, has the gall to go drive <clears throat> around me, but that's fine. You can ignore him? I've, I have ignored him up until that point of the mailbox issue. I haven't talked to the kid or been around him for over a year and a half, two years. Okay. All right, well, I'm, I'm uneasy about this because I'm not sure you've calmed down yet. And I don't know if he has anything to do with it. If I don't know if he totally ignores you or if he does taunt you, I don't know, but I, I think that there's a potential for more trouble. And if I get you out on bond, I need to know that you're not going to be a continued threat to anybody in the community and that you'll reappear for court. And I, I have confidence that as long as you've been in the community and run your own business, that you'll be back to court when you're supposed to. I, I just. Yeah, I'll be back. I just don't want any more trouble with you. So I'm going to allow you to make bond in the amount of $5,000 cash or professional surety, but so only on the condition that you have no contact with this young man or is, are, are you on good terms with his parents or not? No, his mother's one of the victims in this matter. All right, you're to have no contact with Corey Harris. Is he the young man, Corey? Yes. yes. No contact with Corey Harris. No contact with Joni Harris. Is that his mother? Yes. No contact with Keaton Harris. Younger. Younger brother. No contact with Abigail Recker. Who is she? Friend. Friend, okay. That's his shack job. <laughs> okay. So stay away from all of those people. If you see him going down the street, if you see him at the gas station, you're the one on bond. They're not. You understand that? Yeah. So if they get in your face, if they give you gestures, Report, uh, call your names, report that to the police as disorderly conduct, but don't confront them, don't react, just get away because you're the one that will have your bond revoked. Okay. And like I said, I don't know if they, they do any of that, but I'm just telling you if in the worst possible scenario it happens, that's how you need to react or you can be right back where you are. Okay. Anything else that we need to put in that bond, Ms. Gillette? No, that's it. And Ms. Gillette suggested that you've given her some grief out on the streets. Don't be doing that either. That is totally unacceptable. I'm in order that you have no contact with her outside the courtroom. All right. Anything further from you, sir, Mr. Ever or Mr. Everly? Yes, Mr. Everly. Anything further? Yep. All right, so make sure you get with Missy later this week to find out who your attorney is and be back here August 4th at 1.30. All right, thank you all. We'll be excused, uh, excusing Mr. Everly at this time and in recess on his case. You may go, sir. <laughs>